two-month-old, typical, atypical motor development side-by-side. -side. In this video, you will see a typically developing baby and an atypically developing baby in eight different positions. Use this to help recognize early motor delays. Please remember to adjust for prematurity. Position 1. Supine, head. The typically developing baby on the left maintains his head in midline for brief periods, while the atypically developing baby on the right has a more predominance of head turning to one side and strong ATNR, asymmetrical tonic neck reflex. Visual tracking. Notice the typically developing baby locates and visually tracks objects horizontally. The atypically developing baby can locate the object but has difficulty visually tracking and only tracks objects to midline. Extremities. See how the infant on the left begins to show extremity anti-gravity movements and reciprocal kicking, while the atypically developing baby on the right has long periods of inactivity, few anti-gravity movements, and less reciprocal kicking. Position 2. Sideline. Transition. The baby on the left shows lateral head writing and follow-through into rolling with head lifted into prone. Baby on the right can remain in sideline without rolling by flexing his hips and knees, increasing his base of support. Trunk control. The baby on the left is able to switch from using abdominals during the roll to neck and back extensors as he completes the roll. The baby on the right is in a position that doesn't require him to work as hard against gravity, so in this position, he looks more symmetrical. Movement. In this position, the typically developing baby demonstrates an integration of major muscle groups. The atypically developing baby on the right looks more competent in this position. Therefore, it is important to observe in more than one position. Position three, prone. Head lifting. The typically developing baby is able to lift 45 degrees while extending through the upper thoracic spine. Baby on the right still has a newborn posture. He shifts his weight forward towards his head, making it harder to lift. Head and upper trunk. Baby on the left's upper body is free to lift his head and upper trunk off the surface. Note that the changes in leg position on the atypically developing baby allow him to begin developing head and trunk control. Hip position. Watch baby on the left moving out of flexed into flexed in adducted position, while baby on the right remains in flexed in abducted posture. Movement. Notice the baby on the left is doing little weight shifts and is able to counteract with his abdominals to balance while increasing shoulder girdle strength. Baby on the right strategy is to extend and push up on his legs. It doesn't assist him in lifting his head and pushing up on his arms. Position four, pull to sit. Head, the typically developing baby demonstrates head lag expected at this age. He sustains midline head control when upright. The atypically developing baby demonstrates head lag throughout the maneuver and poor head control when upright. Upright. Baby on the left is upright. He has good extension through the cervical and upper thoracic spine. Baby on the right has little activity in the cervical spine and rounding of thoracic and lumbar spine. Upper extremities. The typically developing baby uses shoulder elevation and elbow flexion to assist in the maneuver. The atypical developing baby is not able to use his shoulder girdle to stabilize upper trunk during the maneuver. Position five, sitting, head. Baby on the left's head is aligned with his ear directly over his shoulder. Baby on the right is unable to achieve and sustain head lifting in an upright position. Posture. The typically developing baby has good activity of the neck extensors. He is able to hold and sustain posture with assistance. The atypically developing baby needs more support to sustain a sitting posture. Movement. We don't see a lot of head turning in this position for the baby on the left, but this is typical of this age. Baby on the right's arms are inactive because he lacks shoulder girdle strength. 
Position 6. Horizontal Suspension Anti-Gravity Extension In this position, the typically developing baby's muscles of the neck and trunk can sustain this posture against gravity. We can see in this position the atypically developing baby is unable to lift his head or activate his neck and upper thoracic extensors. Extremities The typically developing baby recruits muscles in the shoulder girdle to augment the thoracic extension. The atypically developing baby moves his arms and legs to stabilize his trunk, which is a non-productive strategy. Position 7. Protective Extension Tilting Forward When we tilt the typically developing baby forward towards the surface, he sustains and increases the head and neck extension. As the atypically developing baby on the right tips forward towards the surface, he is unable to lift his head and extend his trunk. Progression The typically developing baby on the left is on track to demonstrating fundamental control in this position by six months. Note that if the atypically developing baby does not get early therapy to develop head and trunk strength, it is unlikely he will do this position by six months. Position 8. Standing. Posture. When placed in supported standing, we see the typically developing baby has good vertical alignment from head through trunk and feet. Notice the atypically developing baby on the right sustains pseudo-extension when provided maximum support. Upper body. Note that the typically developing baby uses shoulder elevation and his upper extremities are held close to his body to assist and sustain this posture. While the atypically developing baby has little or no intermittent muscle activity to maintain standing. Weight bearing. The typically developing baby sustains weight on lower extremities with trunk support, while the atypically developing baby collapses into flexion when the examiner tries to let him take weight on his feet 